You're listening to the Unstoppable Teen Podcast, episode number 43. Welcome to Unstoppable Teen, the podcast for teenagers, parents, and teachers. My name is Kevin Mincher. Every week, we will bring you an inspirational person or message to help you experience more success and happiness. Thanks for hanging out with us. Let's get this party started. Hello, Unstoppable Nation, it's Kevin here. Welcome to the show. This episode is all about the top 10 employability skills for young people. See, here's the thing, we're heading into the summer season. In fact, the sun is already shining in some parts of the world. It peaked its way through the clouds here in Britain just recently. And I know that as students are getting towards the end of their school year, Many start thinking about getting a summer job. But the question is, what are employers looking for when you go for those jobs? Whether that's a part-time summer job, whether it's an internship, whether it's a voluntary position, or indeed, after you graduate and finish high school, go off to college and university and finish there. When you go out into the jobs market, what are employers actually looking for? That's what this episode is all about. I've been wanting to do an episode on employability skills for a long time now. And the reason for that is, as you know, I go into schools and I work with young people on pretty much a weekly basis. And I work with thousands of teenagers face to face every year. And I'm getting increasingly concerned about the misunderstandings that young people have about what it takes to get a good job. It's as if they think that grades alone are enough to get a decent job, but they're wrong. Just this last week, I had a student in a school in my hometown of Doncaster tell me that he didn't want to volunteer to give back to his community because he was worried about how that would take time away from his studies and his grades might suffer. Now, that might be true. You might get higher grades if you spent more time studying, but your application for a job in the future will stand out more if you've done some community voluntary work. I'm reminded of an occasion over a decade ago when I was doing some work down in London and I went into a sandwich shop. Now, this was in the Square Mile, the city of London. It's like the Wall Street of Britain. And surrounding this sandwich shop are all the big financial institutions, banks and investment organisations that generate huge amounts of wealth. And in this sandwich shop, there was a young woman serving behind the counter. And at some point when she was serving a customer, she completely lost it. That's right. You heard me. She lost it at the customer. She said, you know, I don't need to serve you. I've got better grades, better qualifications, graduated from a better university than you. Who do you think you are? And I was like, oh, here's a young woman who doesn't really get it. You see, grades and qualifications alone are not enough. Grades and qualifications are great things to have on your application form that will help you get a foot in the door. Frankly, if you haven't got good grades and qualifications, you can't expect to get good interviews for good jobs and form a good career. Having a quality education is important in the modern world, but it alone is not enough. There are other attributes, character traits, life skills, if you will, that employers are looking for. Do you know what those things are? You see, when you come into an interview and you meet a boss of a company, somebody like me, we're not looking at your grades anymore. We already know you've got the grades before we ask you to come in for an interview. We've already done the background check to make sure that the grades that you put on the application form were legitimate. (laughs) By the time you come and meet with us, we're now interested in you as a person, as a human being. We're interested in your values, your character traits, what you stand for, what are you passionate about? And you can't show that in a piece of paper that was a set of grades that you got in some qualifications at some point in the past. When you come into the interview, you better know what employers are looking for. Because if you don't know what we're looking for, how can you possibly give it to us and show us that you've got it? Now, it turns out that there's some independent research that's been done. The UK Commission 
for Employability and Skills discovered that there are 30 skills that almost everyone needs to do almost any job. And so it doesn't matter whether you're going to work in construction or pharmaceuticals, whether you're going to work in healthcare, media, education, or any other type of job. There are 30 skills that almost everyone needs to do almost any job. Do you know what they are? In addition to the research that was done by the UK Commission for Employability and Skills, there was separate research done by an organisation called Kaplan. Now, Kaplan went out and interviewed 195 business leaders from companies that employ young people. As they leave high school, as they leave college and university, these organisations give a lot of apprenticeships and full-time jobs and careers to young people. And Kaplan asked those business leaders, what are you looking for when you're hiring these people? Now, you won't be surprised that, of course, they said we're looking for their literacy and numeracy skills, which are reflected in the grades that they got in school. But then what? What else are they looking for? You see, I think that the curriculum that's taught in schools has become unbalanced. There's an unhealthy obsession with the academics and a complete lack of the other skills that young people need to have brilliant careers in the modern economy. In fact, Just a couple of years ago, I was commissioned by the Chamber of Commerce here in Britain to create an employability skills program that business leaders in my hometown of Doncaster were going to go out into schools and do some training with young people to help them be more equipped and ready for the world of work. What I found startling and what inspired me to take on the project was that when business leaders were asked, do you believe that young people are ready for the world of work. Have a guess what percentage of young of those business leaders said that young people were ready. You know, you get to the end of high school, you get to the end of college and university. What percentage of business leaders say that young people are ready for the world of work? Well, shockingly, it was only 12% said that they were ready. That's a massive 88% of business leaders believe that young people are not ready for the world of work. And I'll put it to you that one of the reasons for this is because we've got this obsession with the national curriculum of perfectly important qualifications like English, math, science, and those kinds of subjects. But there's a whole set of other employability skills that are not in the national curriculum, but you need them if you want to get a good job in the modern economy. You cannot rely on your school to give you these skills because they're not getting measured by the government in their delivery of these skills. They're not part of the national curriculum. And frankly, honestly, some people won't like me saying it, in some cases, not all, but in some cases, there are many teachers that don't have these skills themselves. So if you don't have these skills yourself, how can you possibly teach it to somebody else? And that's not being critical of teachers. That's just an honest observation. Indeed, there are many parents that don't have these skills. You might ask the question, why is that? Well, of course, if they were never trained in them, if those parents were never trained in these skills and the teachers were never trained in them, how could you ever expect people to have them? We have to break this cycle of this skills gap. And so for the rest of this episode, I'm going to reveal to you the top 10 employability skills that employers are looking for when they're recruiting young people. Let's get stuck in. So here we go with the top 10 employability skills that almost anybody will need to do almost any job. Number one, and these are in no order of importance, you need to have accountability. Employers want people that will step up and take ownership of their thoughts, their decisions, their actions, and the results that they generate. We do not want to employ people that are blamers, that are looking to shirk responsibility, and when things go wrong, they want to be away from the zone, and out of the way, and don't pick on me, and it wasn't my fault, it was their fault. We need people that are accountable, that will step up, be responsible, and whether that's win, lose, or draw, You're willing to put your name on your actions and your results. We know that nobody is perfect and that mistakes are going to be made. What we can't accept is when people 
avoid responsibility if things didn't go their way. So please make sure that when you're young, you develop this attribute of accountability. Personal responsibility will stand you head and shoulders above the rest when it comes to the interview process. In at number two, we need people that have high levels of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is all about being able to recognize the emotions that you're feeling and being able to regulate your behavior appropriately dependent upon those emotions. But it's also about being able to recognize in other people how they are feeling. And again, regulating your behavior appropriately depending on how they're feeling. Emotional intelligence, according to some research, is now the most accurate predictor of your career success. Not your grades or qualifications, but emotional intelligence. The higher you are on the emotional intelligence scale, the more successful you are likely to be in careers and jobs in the modern economy. Number three, we need people that have a positive mental attitude. It's that old adage of, do you see the glass as half empty or do you see it as half full? Are you one of those negative Ned pessimists that always expects bad things to go wrong? Are you a dementor? You know, the character out of Harry Potter that sucks the joy, the life, the soul out of the space that you're in? Or are you an optimist? Do you expect good things to happen? Are you focused on positive solutions rather than the problems? Do you talk about good news rather than bad news? You see, we'll spend more time at work than doing pretty much anything else in our lives. And therefore, employers want to surround themselves and their teammates with positive people. Nobody wants to go to work and be sat next to a a pessimist that's always, you know, looking down at the floor and criticizing everything all the time. We want positive people. And the good thing, the good news here, is that this is a choice about what you do with your perceptions. Instead of talking about the problems all the time, talk about the solutions. Instead of focused on bad stuff, focus on good stuff. It's a shift in your perception. Anybody can develop a positive mental attitude. You just have to train yourself over time. In number four, you need to have effective communication skills. It's been said that the quality of our life is directly related to the quality of our relationships. Of course, the quality of our relationships is directly related to the quality of our communication skills. And our careers are directly related to the quality of our communication skills. This penny dropped for me when I was a teenager. I was in my late teens when I first started reading books on body language, your tone of voice, vocabulary, and becoming a better communicator. So, as frustrating as this might be, there are very few modules of the national curriculum that are about effective communication. How to communicate effectively in person, how to communicate effectively over the phone, via email, and through other forms of media. Yes, we attend language lessons and English lessons and things like that. But the nuances of effective communication in the business environment, in the working world, are very rarely taught in schools. And so it's your task, your challenge in your own time to make sure you upskill yourself in this essential area. In at number five, in the modern economy, you need to have, if you want to be employable, you've got to have high quality problem solving skills. It's a knowledge-based economy where we regularly have to solve problems. And as a young person, oftentimes our parents solve our problems for us. Our teachers solve problems for us. The government solves problems for us. But when you become a member of a team in a company, you have to become the problem solver. You can't always wait for somebody to tell you what to do, when to do it and how to do it. You've got to look at the challenge that's in front of you and be able to come up with a solution. And there are, thankfully, problem-solving skills. There are books on critical thinking, creative thinking, and problem-solving. I recommend that you start reading those books and even attending seminars on these important skills. In at number six, we need to employ people that are resilient. This is what employers are looking for these days. And if you don't want to be employed, maybe you want to be self-employed. But even then, 
You certainly need to be resilient. See, the fact is, in the real world, things go wrong. And when they go wrong and a customer is there, we have to put them right. And sometimes that means you've got to turn up early. You've got to stay behind late. Sometimes you have to go the extra mile. Sometimes it gets tough. And we need to employ people that are not going to quit and bail out on us and throw in a sick day just because it got hard. No, we need people that are resilient. And so therefore, if you want to be resilient in the workforce, you need to develop your resilience muscle during your teenage years. Here's how you do it. Complete regular challenges that are a little bit outside your comfort zone. So for example, if the idea of reading out loud in class fills you with a little bit of dread and fear, you need to start reading out loud in class. If the idea of getting up in front of a whole year group of your peers scares you with the idea of getting up there to sing or dance, then you need to get up there and do it. Go and sing, go and dance. And by doing these things now, when you're in your teenage years, you'll have greater levels of resilience when you get to the workforce and the workplace later on. I used to be petrified of heights. And so I used to challenge myself to go and do things like rock climbing, abseiling, high ropes courses, zip wires and zip slides. By doing things that were outside of my comfort zone, I was able to improve my resilience. You can do it too. All you have to figure out is what's the next challenge you're going to take on to build your resilience muscle. In at number seven, you need to have strong levels of self-confidence. That ability to believe in your own strengths, believe in your own skills, believe in your own intelligence and your own talents. There's a fine line between being confident and being arrogant. I was chatting with a teenager just last week who tipped over that line. He had become arrogant. Arrogance is where you have a higher opinion of yourself than your skills are actually able to facilitate. In other words, you've got a bit of an ego and you think you're better than you actually are. And this young man had this strong, high opinionated opinion of himself, but when he was put in a difficult situation, he didn't have the skills, the attributes that were necessary to solve the problem. Arrogance, no thank you. You'll be sent straight out of the interview room. But confidence, that feeling inside that you trust yourself. We want to employ confident people. And if you don't have this attribute, don't hope for it to show up. Don't wait for it to show up. Make it show up by getting yourself on some personal development programs, by listening to some inspirational podcasts, by going to some seminars and reading some books on the very subject. There are simple skills and techniques that you can do to boost your confidence. Things like affirmations, visualization techniques. We teach them here at Unstoppable Teen through our programs. They're so simple, but you've got to do them. In at number eight, we want to employ people that have high levels of curiosity. The modern world, the modern economy is fast changing. And we're constantly needing to create new products, new services, and find new ways to please our customers and the communities that we serve. And so therefore, if you want to be employable, if you want to be the person that gets your dream job, the way you do that is having the attribute of curiosity. You see, we constantly need to improve. You've got to have a curious mind to find new ways. You've got to be constantly wanting to learn, as they call it in Japan, Kaizen, constant and never ending improvement. And the only way you can improve if you're constantly looking for those little gains and if you're going to look for the gains, you've got to be curious. You've got to look for people that are doing it better than you and see if you can match it and model it. Curiosity will stand you out from the crowd in a job interview process. Number nine, linked to curiosity, is about adaptability. We can't afford to employ people who are stuck in their ways. In a rapidly changing world, if you are resistant to change, you get left behind. Those people who have more flexibility in the way that they think and have flexibility in the way that they behave will be more successful than those people who are set in their ways. 
So develop this attribute. Stop whining and moaning when the curriculum changes, when you're asked to sit next to a different person in your one of your favorite lessons, when the location of a particular activity moves or the timing moves. These are ways of you at a young age being able to develop some flexibility and some adaptability. And then finally, in at number 10, you need to have some commerciality skills. What do we mean? Commerciality is all about understanding the business, the business's aims, their objectives, their mission, their vision, their values. What are their targets? You see, many people make the mistake when they go into a job interview of being focused on what they are going to get from the company. How much are you going to pay me? How many days holiday am I going to get? What's my bonus going to be? They're focused on what they're going to receive when what they should be focused on is how they're going to contribute, what they're going to give, and how they're going to add more value. Now, the only way that you can add value in a company and get rewarded for it is if you understand that business's aims and objectives. If you don't understand what the business exists for, then you can't add value. So please, start to educate yourself and inform yourself on commercial things, why businesses exist, and what they're trying to do to serve their community, their customers, their shareholders, and of course, their employees. These are the top 10 attributes that almost everyone needs to do almost any job. So let's do a quick summary before we wrap this episode up. The top 10 employability skills for young people today are first of all, in reverse order, you need some commerciality, understanding business objectives. You need to be adaptable. You've got to have some curiosity. You need to be self-confident. You need to be resilient, have good problem solving skills, effective communication skills, have a positive mental attitude, be highly emotionally intelligent, and ultimately you need to be accountable. When you have these 10 attributes and combine them with high quality qualifications, good grades from school, when you match them together, that's a marriage made in heaven. And when you then submit an application and you turn up for an interview, you separate yourself from the crowd and you are head and shoulders above the rest. And that's whether you want a simple summer job, whether you want to get an internship, some part-time work, a voluntary position, or indeed, if you're pursuing your ultimate career that you've always wanted, you'll find that these 10 attributes will stand you in great stead. Please don't rely on your school to help you develop these attributes. Don't sit at home hoping that they'll show up, waiting for them to come along, because they won't. It requires you to develop your own personal development plan where you'll start reading some books, listening to more podcasts, getting yourself enrolled on some extracurricular activities that might take you in some orienteering or outward bounds or engaged in the performing arts or participation in sports. Maybe you'll even attend an Unstoppable Teen seminar or complete one of our programs. However you do it, make sure you do it. If you'd like to get the cheat sheet or in other words, the downloadable guide of these top 10 attributes, you can do that by simply going to unstoppableteen.com forward slash 43 download. I've put together a a PDF report uh, that summarizes the research that's been done by the UK Commission for Employability and Skills and the research I referenced earlier on by Kaplan. If you want to know what the top 10 attributes are, and you want to be able to print it off and pass it on to your friends, your family members, students in your school, simply go to unstoppableteen.com forward slash 43 download. I'm aware that some schools have used this PDF to create schemes of work around employability skills. I'd be chuffed if you want to download it and use it in your school. Please feel free to do that. If you feel that this episode could be useful for somebody that you know, please share it with them, whether that's via social media or ping them a quick message. 
We'd really appreciate it because we here are on a mission to help a million young people experience a better quality of life. And in the modern world, it's really important that you take control of your finances. And in order to do that, to have money, you need to get a good job that you enjoy. And that's why we did this episode. So we'll be back again next week. Of course, it would be wrong of me to go without encouraging you, our listeners, to make sure you're subscribed. It's a weekly show. Uh, You can subscribe at unstoppableteen.com forward slash subscribe. But you can also subscribe on YouTube and iTunes. Well, that's it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. I look forward to being back next week where we'll help you learn more things to help you become unstoppable. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.